The Tribal Code of Justice by Dennis M. Morrison Sr. published in Indian Artifacts Magazine in 1990. The Chippewa and Ottawa that inhabited the Saginaw Valley region of Michigan were usually quite friendly with each other and during hunting season often camped next to each other. In the fall of 1853 a group of one tribe built their cabins on the banks of the Saginaw River and a group of the, of the other tribe, about 80 in number, camped close by. It is not necessary to tell of their lives in these camps, since their days were spent hunting and their nights drinking and drinking fire water. In one of the happenings at camp, a Saginaw Indian, maddened by liquor, killed his woman and hid what he did by throwing her body upon the fire. Upon recovering from his stupor, he saw that the signs of his guilt were still before him. Fearing the wrath of his tribe, he fled toward the neighboring camp. His absence was noticed, and the charred remains of the woman were found, and the cries for blood were heard. The avengers were soon on his tracks, and they pursued him to the camp of their neighbors. The man was apprehended, and in solemn council deemed to death, which in the old Indian code is reserved for those only who shed the blood of their kin. It was a slow, and a torturing, and a cruel death. A hatchet was put in the victim's hand, and he made his own coffin. This was done by cutting into a log some distance at the top and bottom, about his own height. The hollow was then dug larger, so that as to admit his body. When this was done, he was taken back and tied to a tree. Then they smoked and drank fire water, and when evening came, they kindled large fires around him. The, brave, the braves drank to intoxication, danced and sang in a wild manner, chanting the dirge of the recreant brave. An arrow was then fitted into the bowstring, and with a shrill twang the missile was sent into the quivering flesh of the victim, and to heighten his misery his nose and his ear were cut back. The next day was spent sleeping and eating while the victim was tied to the tree. What his reflections were we cannot, of course, tell, but he bore his punishment as a warrior should, and when night came it brought his executioners to their work again. The scene of the first night was reenacted, and it went on for a week. For seven long days he stood there tortured with the most cruel torture before his proud head dropped upon his breast and his spirit left its former place of abode for the hunting grounds of the great spirit Gichimanitu. The body was then taken and wrapped in a clean blanket and placed in the log coffin that he had helped to fashion. They put his hunting knife by his side so that he might have something to protect himself with along the way and his whiskey bottle so that he might cheer his spirits with a drink now and then, and his tobacco pipe, so that he might smoke. The cover was put on, and the stakes driven down, and with the murdered woman avenged, the camp broke, and the old stillness and quiet of the forest once more reigned. The information <clears throat> in this story was found in a tattered old book called The History of Saginaw County. I don't have the date of publication in my files, although the best as I can recall it was around 1880. I realize the story is not the most pleasant, but it does reflect part of the Indian culture, even if not the part we would always like to remember. But then even our modern civilized world has its barbaric ways. Sometimes I feel the Indian had much less crime than we do because of this.